My name is Andrew Arai. I'm a cardiologist at the National Institutes of Health. Um, I've been here since about January of 1994. Um, right now, I'm the director of the Advanced Cardiovascular Imaging Laboratory for the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. So ejection fraction is a measurement of how much blood the left ventricle pumps out on a beat-by-beat -beat basis. And when we um, measure the ejection fraction, we get a series of um, what we call the short axis views. Essentially, we're going to cut um, parallel slices through the left ventricle um, like a loaf of bread. Um, and those images give us um, a, a circular image of the left ventricle. And so we're going to be able to see um, how big the heart is when it's most full at end diastole and how small it gets at end systole uh, when it's ejected the blood. So the left hand screen here shows the what we call the three chamber view. We see the left atrium, the mitral valve, the left ventricle, uh, the aortic valve, and a little bit of the um, ascending aorta, and a little bit of the right ventricle. Or the frame on the left side of the screen shows us the what we call the four chamber view of the heart. We can see all the cardiac chambers. So blood comes um, from the veins back to the heart into the right atrium, and that chamber is where the um, mouse cursor is right now. Then the right atrium pumps the blood through the tricuspid valve. You can see these little um, leaflets like a windshield wiper on a car opening and closing. And the blood goes into the right ventricle. The right ventricle is this sort of triangular shaped structure where the mouse is outlining right now. The right ventricle pumps the blood out to the lungs where it picks up oxygen and gets rid of carbon dioxide. The blood will then return inside the heart into the left atrium. Uh, the mouse cursor is in the middle of the left atrium right now, which is a primer pump for the left ventricle. So the left atrium will pump the blood through the mitral valve uh, up into the left ventricle. And so what you see on that right-hand screen, the left ventricle now looks like a donut-shaped structure. Um, you can see with each heartbeat that the muscle, that dark gray band, is getting thicker and the blood inside it, the white patch, is getting smaller. Um, that's the blood getting ejected from the left ventricle. There are a few dark bands or islands in the middle here. These are the papillary muscles that hold the valves in place. And then the right ventricle is this crescent-shaped structure on the um, uh, left-hand side of this image between the left ventricle and the chest wall. Okay, so this is a display of how we measure um, left ventricular ejection fraction. And what we have is a grid of um, images here of the left ventricle. Um, there are going to be 12 rows of images, each representing a different slice of the heart from the base of the left ventricle out to the apex. The um, columns represent different phases across the cardiac cycle. And so that we get 30 images across the cardiac cycle. And I'll show that on one of these slices at the mid-ventricle. So this image uh, in the upper left-hand corner um, is um, the first image across the cardiac cycle for a slice near the middle of the left ventricle. So this is where our cardiologist said um, there, that's left uh, ventricular end systole for this slice. And what they drew is two uh, uh, lines here. The outer green line is one that the contest does not require. That's the outer border of the epicardium. Um, the red contour uh, represents the border between the muscle of the left ventricle, which is the dark tissue, versus the blood in the middle, um, the white, uh, whitish gray um, um, uh, cavity. Um, now there is um, obviously some dark stuff inside the cavity, and this is one of the things that makes um, automatic measurements difficult. Um, these again are the papillary muscles and some trabeculations that stick into the cavity. Um, and so we're, we're interested for uh, purposes of this um, uh, contest to try to get a contour that um, shows where the meat or the solid portion of the left ventricle ends and the borders with the blood, but to exclude from uh, the muscle and uh, these papillary muscles. The next slice down, though, you can see all of a sudden you've got a, uh, that dark gray band of heart muscle. Um, there's a big um, amount of blood uh, cavity on this uh, particular slice. So this is the first slice that should be included in measuring 
uh, the left ventricular and diastolic volume. And as we go down slice by slice, you can see that the um, traces of uh, the red contour and the green contour uh, nicely delineate where the um, muscle of the left ventricle is and capture the size of the um, blood pool. And here we go down to the apex. So that's the bottom slice at end um, diastole. Here at the apex, there's relatively little muscle and relatively little blood. Um, the slices get bigger slice by slice. until we get near the base of the heart. And this one is where there's a decision. Not all groups will do it the same way. Our group um, looks where we still see left ventricular muscle. Uh, we trace that on, with the green and red contours. Um, but we don't force either the whole slice or to be there or not. So we can get a partial slice um, with this methodology. Now the contest is um, giving you not just the short axis views like I show you here, um, the contest is giving um, um, participants the chance to use the long axis views to define where the end of the ventricle is. Take another breath in. And blow it out. Stop breathing.